Hi guys, it's Nancy. And I, I'm gonna play with some Lisa Horton products that are new to me. First of all, I wanna say thanks to my friend Diane. She sent me, I swatched them out. These Lisa Horton Premium Pigment Ink Captures Fine Detail Ink Pads. So we have Strawberry Sunday, Early Sunrise, Juicy Pineapple, Woodland Moss, Tranquil Waters, Surf's Up, Deep Ocean, Spiced Plum, Sugar Candy, and Cobblestones. And I noticed when I was swatching them out, they are spongy pads as well. They're not as high as the... Um, interference ink so the interference first of all the interference ink pads are black and you can see that they interfere from your white cardstock to your dark cardstock so this will stamp in this uh charcoal gray color but the mica in it is gold so these are the shimmer ink pads that i'm like obsessed with right now and then these are just regular ink pads so they're white they are the same shape they stack great um these are manufactured, I believe, in the UK, or that's where they're originally from. That's where she's from. Um, and if you look, it is, they're both spongy ink pads, but you can see this one has a smoother consistency, um, and it's a little, it's not as high as this one. This one is a true, um, you can tell like it's more spongy. You can see all those kind of pores where this is a little smoother. So that is the difference. And I think that's so this can hold all the mica, which makes sense. Um, but they're both pretty juicy. And I will link the links down below where you can get them. Like I said, my friend Diane sent those to me. These I purchased from scrapbook.com and from Joggles. And I will link those links down below. Um, but I also did order some Lisa Horton products. And I'm super excited to play with them. So first thing I have is this Botanical Fern 6x6. Basically a 3D embossing folder. And what I use to emboss this, if you're using your, your Platinum, it's the same as the other 3D embossing folder. So I just use Platform A and plat your embossing folder and Platform D. So the same thing we use for the Spellbinders 3D embossing folders, that's what you're going to use on these embossing folders. So that, that was my little my little test and I cut this paper to five and a half by five and a half and it fits perfectly there is a border around here so five and a half by five and a half is the perfect size for embossing this okay then I got these um, hot foil butterflies so I thought we would foil those together and I got these layering stencils that I thought we could layer. So these all coordinate together. And then I got the 3D embossing folder, but I didn't know it came with dies when I did the unboxing. So when I opened this and saw, <gasps> I literally was like, oh, there's dies in there. So um, yes, so we have a butterfly embossing folder and that comes with the dies. And yes, the dies are the same size. This makes me really happy, you guys, when things all like line up and match up. Look at that, perfect. So. I don't know. I'm becoming a really big Lisa Horton fangirl. So we're going to play with these things. Let me get out um, my glimmer machine. We will, um, my thought was to um, foil the butterflies, hot foil them, and use the layering stencils on those guys. Okay, and that's why I bought this fern background because I thought that would be pretty with the butterflies on here. And then for the butterflies, I thought we could um, use the interference inks on those because I saw Lisa do a video, um, or not those, the interference inks on those and ink those up and cut those out and make two cards. So yeah, let me grab my glimmer machine and heat that up. I'm gonna pre... Um, while I'm heating that up, I'll show you guys how I'm going to ink these up and then we'll cut those out while we're waiting for the hot foil. So I will be right back. Okay, for the sake of trying to make it easier on some of you guys, I know Lisa Horton products are from the UK, so I am using my Gemini foil press and I'm going to use some of my Blue Bonnet hot stamping foil because this is just gorgeous. Um... And I've cut some paper down in half to uh, five and a half by eight and a half. 
I'm just gonna try to move these up. I'm gonna try to get as many butterflies as I can on here. That terrible, terrible, terrible tape on here again. <laughs> ah, hate the tape. All right, so I'm just gonna try to fill this up as much as I can so we can try to get as many butterflies foiled as possible. What if I go like this? But I need to leave a little bit of space so I can die cut them. And I have my machine on medium because I'm using, this is new foil to me from Blue Bonnet. So normally other companies' foils have to be on medium. Uh, my half sheet of hammer mill, 100 pound, I believe this is. I'm gonna put this on top. I'm gonna set this over to the side to cook, okay? And while it's cooking, warming up, I should say, we're gonna do some ink blending. stuff on the side. Too many things. Too many things. We're going to set that on the side. Okay, so let's um, let's take this half of paper. Is this going to be wide enough? Yes. So I'm going to cut this piece of paper. This is the other half of the paper to five and a half. this through the embossing folder so 3d butterfly embossing folder five and a half by five and a half piece of hammer mill cardstock and again I believe this is the hundred pound normally I grab the hundred pound um, we're gonna put the dies aside and we're gonna run ooh should we ink it before we go through the embossing folder I think we should do that first because then I can line it up better. Okay. Back up. I mean, you could go directly through the embossing folder. Let's do it this way. Oh, I'm going to use my little sticky mat thing. Now everybody has these. You can get them from new Waffle Flower. This one I got from the Peddler's Den, but it's just a sticky mat. I'm going to stick it to my Waffle Flower mat. It's just a big piece of um, photopolymer. And it should hold paper down. Perfect. And then we have our stencils. Are these ordered? Is there a number? Yes. So in the top corner here, there is a numbering system. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers to this. And I'm just gonna eyeball line it up here. Make sure all my edges are down and then just use that to stick up there. And I'm gonna use these inks. I don't know how this is gonna go, but we're gonna try it. And I'm gonna use some of my, my little blending brushes. And we're just gonna blend, blend, blend. I'm gonna start with the, I think we'll go traditional. I know you guys hate that, I'm so boring. But I'm gonna go traditional like yellow oranges. Oh, that's on tight. Okay, so this one is called Juicy Pineapple. I could go for one of those right now. That sounds delish. And just gonna go with my blending brush.
Ooh, got a lot of ink that time. See, now this just proves that you guys influence me um, because I never heard of Lisa Horton. I think I've heard of her, but never really just, you know, paid attention to designs and stuff like that. And Lori in our group um, had showed us the interference inks and she was like, you have to try these inks. So I bought a couple to try out in a couple colors to see how they would work. And they were amazing. And they were so good um, that I went and <laughs> I bought the whole set. Not only did I buy the whole first set, but as soon as they launched the second set, I bought all of those. And I do not regret it. I love using those inks. You've probably seen a couple of my videos already where I've used them on many different backgrounds. I've stamped with them. Um, they're just really pretty with that mica built in. So then my friend Diane sent me these inks and I was like, okay, I'll try those out. I'll, I don't need any more inks in my collection, but I tried them out. And then I was like, oh, let me go online. And I started watching Lisa's, um, her, her YouTube channel. So I'll link that down below. And she gave me a shout out in one of her YouTube channels. And I was not expecting that. That was a real, you know, surprise for me. Um, and so then she was showing, she was showing a lot of her new release stuff and she's in the UK, but a lot of her products are carried by Joggles and by scrapbook.com. So of course, after I'm done watching the video, I went on scrapbook.com and I wanted everything. I wanted it all, but you know, I'm limited. So I only picked the things that I knew I would use. And I thought, look, there's a whole bunch of things here that coordinate and you don't really know until you have it in your hands if it's going to coordinate. So I bought all the butterfly sets and then I thought, well, I need a background. So I bought the fern, but I definitely, <laughs> I have a wish list in my scrapbook.com account, you guys, that I'm going to go buy more things. So this started because you guys you guys enabled me and I'm just like you guys. I watch videos, I see pretty things, and then I want to buy all the pretty things. So, all right, that is the first layer. We did with Juicy Pineapple Regular Pigment Ink. Okay, I'm going to just peel this up. And just put that aside for cleaning. My uh, thingy is taking an awfully long time to heat up here. What's going on? Did I unplug it? Oh no, is this one of those dumb ones that, oops, oops, doesn't register? I think it is. I just dropped all my dies on the floor. Okay, hold on. I think I picked one of those. Some of the plates don't register in the machine. Is this a newer machine or an older machine? Well, it doesn't matter, it's not working. So let me grab one of my crusty warped ones here. Something doesn't feel right. Okay, I put a warped one on. We'll see if that heats up. Normally it beeps when it plugs in though. I know you guys can't see me, I'm tinkering over here. Well, that one started to heat up. Okay. I think we have one that's warming up. But I thought it beeped when you plug the thingy in. Okay. I think that one's warming up. Let me try this again. I'm so sorry for the machine breaking my heart once again. Don't go break it, my heart. Okay. Sandwich this all back together. Should have been warmed up by now, so I know something's not right there. Okay, I believe it is warming up now. Okay, moving on. So now we're just going to move this guy over here out of the way. And we're going to go in with number two. It's number two right there in the corner. Can you see that? And, ooh, ooh, now we're getting detailed. I'm going <laughs> to eyeball this. I should have probably used some, some kind of registration marks, but... We'll be okay. We'll be okay. It's all right. Do the best you can. 
All right. Now this seems to be kind of darker accents, so I'm gonna do that in this um, darker gray color, cobblestones. That get ink all over my fingers. These fine little detail brushes make it way easier. And I think if you don't have blending brushes, I believe Lisa has her own set of blending brushes. So for my friends that are in the UK that can't get these things from the US, um, you can get these, I believe from, is it, is it uh, oh shoot, what's the channel called? Create and Craft? I wanna say Create and Craft, Craft Stash. I have a craft stash link. I don't have Create and Craft. What's the other company out there? Hobby Craft? Something like that. I know that there's like a huge major distributor out there in the UK. So that's where you want to, you know, follow Lisa. I'm sure you guys already follow Lisa Horton, but, you know, shop wherever she has links in UK. Her products. Oh yeah, that's warming up now. All right, that is the dark gray, which is called cobblestones. That's for layer two. Ooh, it's so pretty. Okay, layer three. is more details. Again, I'm gonna try to line up what I can here. That's correct. Close enough. I'm going to use um, orange on this layer. Early sunrise. Oh, it's just two butterflies. I get that. Okay. It'll be interesting to see which layers we use on the um, foiled butterflies. Okay. So just those two for that one. That's layer three. Pretty. The hardest part is to make sure I don't stick my hands in the, <laughs> in the ink or the brush. I'm trying not to get all inky. <laughs> All right, layer four is another detail. Now we get into some more with the bigger butterflies. Again, just going to kind of eyeball this. And of course, you could change your colors. I'm just being kind of conservative here, but you do what works for you. Okay, I think I'll do um, maybe a darker blue for this one. Deep ocean. Oh, that's kind of dark. That's a juicy ink pad.
How many of you guys have started watching um, Wheel of Time Season 2 on Amazon Prime? Um, Jerry got us hooked on Season 1 last year. And then she got me hooked on the books. So I read up until Book 8. And then I kind of stopped. Um, but now Season 2 is out. And that is called Wheel of Time. Pretty cool. I'm very geeked out by it. All right. Number five is... Ooh, ooh, okay. Now we're getting, we're getting a little more details here. Again, just trying to line it up. You know what I like about this is even though I can tell I'm not exactly lined up perfectly, um doesn't really matter it's not like gonna hurt my image it's 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 very pretty it's not very cut and dry like this is how it has to be I think for this one I'm gonna go in with the red which was called strawberry Sunday. that sounds good right now too maybe I should go make myself some lunch <laughs> Oh, guess who's ready? About time you joined the party there, girlfriend. Okay. She scared me. I jumped. I'll say for pigment inks these dry pretty fast normally pigment inks stay pretty wet and you can yeah you have a little bit of kind of play time but these are drying pretty quickly but I can tell they're pigments because they're very creamy um, you'll you'll know when you when you play with them they're very creamy and they're very vibrant and bright you can see that color sitting on top it's not soaking into the paper but the downfall to most pigment inks is that they take a minute to dry, so you end up smearing your image. But I can tell you guys, this is this is drying very quickly. It's a quick drying pigment ink. And it doesn't have a chalky finish like a lot of pigment inks do. It's very clear. And the difference between pigment inks and dye inks is pigment inks, I always say, think of it like paint. It sits on top of your paper and you have to wait for it to dry. Where dye inks actually go in and dye your paper, so they usually dry very, very quickly. But because they dye into your paper, they fade back a little bit. So pigment inks are normally much brighter because they sit on top. You just have to give them the drying time they need. And dye inks dry a lot faster because they dye into your paper. They even themselves out. So they both have pros and cons. It's just a matter of, I really think, you know, you just pick the colors you like. You can mix and match your inks. It does not matter. Someone did ask me if I separate my brushes and my blending tools by pigment and dye inks. And my answer is no. I have not noticed any difference when I mix my inks. Um... That's up to you, personal preference, if you want to have separate tools for separate types of inks. I've been mixing them. I don't see any kind of negative effects by doing that. It's just ink on ink. Now, I want to make sure that I'm not cross-contaminating colors. Like, I wouldn't go over this now with my yellow. I would use a um, scrap piece of paper and, um, you know, just make sure that I clear this out before I go into another color. So that would be, you know, my only concern is that you would cross-contaminate colors, but I'm not concerned about pigment inks crossing with dye inks or dye inks crossing with pigment inks. Okay. 
two more layers here. Let's run this girl through the Gemini Junior quick. So I am just disconnecting her. My Junior's on the side. I just run it through. Okay, hopefully it did. This is my first time using these plates and my first time using this foil. And I did medium heat. I didn't do a timer because I knew I was sitting here inking, so I don't really need to do a timer. But let's reveal. Wow, those are gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna turn the glim I mean the foil press off before my plate starts to warp. That is Stunning. Okay, so we're going to put that aside for now. Save this for another day. We are almost done with this guy. This is just coming into my craft room on a day when I don't um, feel obligated to do design teamwork. This is all products I bought with my money with the exception of the inks that were gifted to me. And, um, you know, this is, this is what I do. I don't always just do design team stuff. I do splurge my money like you guys do as a crafter. And I just wanted to share a little piece of that with you guys. And when I find things that work, I, I want to share that with you guys. Okay. This one, cause there's so many different layers is a little bit harder to line up, but give me just a second here. I think we're good right there. I like the little sticky mat. That's definitely helping. Okay, get some interesting choices here. Do I go back in with the red? I think I go back in with the red. Maybe I do red and orange. I don't know. I think I do the red. No, I'm gonna do orange. <laughs> It's gonna turn orange anyway when it mixes with the yellow. I'm gonna do orange. And again, you do what works for you, boo. You can make pink and purple butterflies if you want to. No judgment. All right, now I'm thinking that's too light. I think I'm going to go back and do the red. Let's do the orange and then I'll go back where and, and put some of the red in. We'll mix it. This little sticky mat definitely helps with holding the stencils in place. I, I like that. I mean, Ultra New Waffle Flower, you guys came out with this. Really good idea with the sticky mat. I go back to red. Okay, that's good for red. And we have one more layer. That looks good. Okay. Oops. Yeah, seven. So this is just the last two butterflies. moved it. Okay, come on. Come on, little buddy. Close enough. 
I'm going to go back in with the... Ooh, I don't want to use gray. Ooh, how about we use this dark green? The green is called Woodland Moss. Perfect name for it. It is kind of a mossy green color. Oop, move the stencil on that one. We're done playing with that one. Okay. There are butterflies. Lots of red, orange, and yellow going on in there. Um, while I have this green out, pretty, um, we're going to cut those out. The first layer should have had the antennae, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I want to bring in, where's that green piece I did? Here we go. This one. Oh, I just ripped it. I'm going to um, just ink blend some of this green on top just to give it a little bit more depth. See that? Hopefully. You see this side I did it on and not over there? It's a little darker. I don't think the camera's picking that up. White would be a good ink to do over this background too because the white would really highlight it. And you could go direct to paper with the ink pad, but then you get some of those smudgies in the middle, and I don't want that. Oh, I should have used the shimmer ink on here, because then it would really shine. We'll do the shimmer ink when we do the other butterflies. Remind me. <laughs> okay. Okay. See, it's a little darker. Not a ton darker, just a little darker. All right, now we want to run these through here and then die cut them. But if I die cut them, will they go flat? Should I die cut them first? I think I should die cut them first. Because if I put them through here and then die cut them, they'll go flat, right? So I think I should die cut first. Where to put the dice? Since we're die cutting, let's, ooh, we don't want to die cut these until we stencil them. We'll die cut those in a minute. You don't have to stencil them, but. That lines up very nicely. Very nice. Okay, so this is not a three hour long video. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna die cut all of these, and then I'm gonna come back. Okay, I realized as I was die cutting these that I couldn't stencil these unless I cut them first, and I don't feel like doing that, so we're gonna be lazy, and I'm gonna just do some quick ink blending. I grabbed the Tropical Paradise Interference inks, which is going to be a pink, Lavender Fields, which will be purple, and Peacock Tails, which will be a teal. So I'm just gonna, real quick, I've cut all the other ones out. So we're gonna run those through the 3D folder in just a moment. These I just want a real quick ink blend. Um, so let's start with the pink. I thought they would be pretty shimmer on shimmer.
I'm sorry this video is so long. I didn't realize. <laughs> I'm just having a play date with myself. <laughs> okay. And this is the Peacock Tails, which is going to be like a teal color. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, it makes its own purple. I don't even really need to add purple to that one. And then Lavender Fields is the purple. Okay, I think we're good there. Okay, now I'm going to pause and I'm going to go die cut all of these. I'll be back. Okay, those are all die cut out, but I need another one of these uh, backgrounds. So I have another piece of cardstock cut out and this I cut down to five and a quarter by four. But I want to ink this. So what I'm going to do is feel for the raised side, which is where the ferns are. And I'm going to use the Magic Garden um, ink. And I'm putting that right on the fern. Okay, then I'm gonna take my cardstock. I probably should spritz it real quick. Where's my spritzer? Mayday, mayday. One quick little spritz. I'm not putting the wet side down, I'm putting the wet side up so that it does not touch my ink. I'm gonna try to line that up. And again, it's base platform A and D for 3D in the Platinum System. And that through. Ta-da! Well, it's kind of hard to see. Oh, I did it on the wrong side. I debossed it. Ooh, that still looks pretty, though. I should have did it on that side. Whoopsie. I'm going to use that side because that looks cool. And then this I'll just spray and wipe down. Deal with that later. Let's, um, let's cut out our other butterflies. So these are all foiled ooh, and inked and cut out and shimmery now. Okay, they cut beautifully, by the way. So we have one, two, three, four, five butterflies. Is that correct? Let's put them in here now. All right, now I want them, you got to put them face down because I want them to press up into that. So put them face down. They'll fit in just like a cookie cutter here. might want to use a little piece of tape to secure them so they don't move all over the place when you're running it through your machine.
Oops, I bumped that one. But you can feel it fit in for the most part, just kind of drops into place. Oops, they came on tape. No, no moving. All right. Close enough. I can see some of them are off a little bit. tape is my enemy. The, moving it with the tape is now my enemy. Okay. Close enough. All right. Now we can assemble some cards. 40 minutes later. I am so sorry, you guys, but I'm having fun here and I wanted to walk you through the process step by step. So now these are embossed. They're raised now. I have my two backgrounds. So one is going to be six by six. I know that you guys like that in other countries. In the U.S., we normally make A2, but I know there's a lot of you guys that are starting to go into bigger size cards. These are really cute. Oh my gosh. I love it. I think I want to put the big foiled ones on this guy here. Then I just need to add a little sentiment. See, and these two butterflies are a little bit different design. They're really kind of like, I don't know, artsy. They're like punk rock butterflies. And then we have these kind of traditional looking butterflies. And I have plenty left to make way more cards. But yeah, I really like the interference inks. You can see all of that shimmer and how it comes through. They foil beautifully. The embossing folders are 3D. I am in love. So I'm basically just going to glue these on the card bases, throw some sentiments on. I love, love, love Lisa Horton's products. Now I'm a big fan girl. And again, I use the Botanical Fern for the background. I used the... Dies come with the uh, embossing folder. So you get the, yeah, coordinating outline dies included. I don't know why I didn't see that. So you get the dies and the embossing folder for the butterflies. Okay, and then I have the layering stencils. They're beautiful. And beautifully hot foiled butterflies. So go check out these out. I'll link them down below, uh, down below. And also the inks. The inks are fabulous. I love the interference inks more than the pigment inks. I have enough inks, so I think I'll put the pigment inks in the giveaway box. So if you want a chance to win these pigment inks, comment down below. What do you think? What do you think? Do you have Lisa Horton products? That's what I want to know. Comment down below, um, and I will give away that whole set of pigment inks. Um, U.S. only, 18 years and older. You want to comment down below um, if you have any Lisa Horton products, and I'll pick a winner, and I will send someone those inks. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget the thumbs up. Bye-bye.